The following podcast was recorded on Tuesday, September 5th, 2023, featuring Jim Bianco of Bianco Research. To hear the podcast in real time, you can sign up for a free trial at biancoresearch.com or arborresearch.com or by emailing Gus Handler directly at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. You can also call Arbor Research and Trading at 1-800-606-1872. Thanks for your time and enjoy the podcast. Welcome everyone to the latest edition of Talking Data. I'm your host, Kristen Radish with Arbor Research and Trading, joined today by our commentator, Jim Bianco of Bianco Research. Welcome, Jim. Thanks for having me. Today, Jim answers the question, what is going on with the basis trade and bond market sentiment? Jim, start us off today. What is the latest with the basis trade? So let's talk about this basis trade. Um, this trade has been around since the late 70s. It is trading cash versus the futures in treasury futures. Uh, when you own a treasury futures contract at expiration, there is a conversion factor and you multiply it by all of the outstanding treasuries to figure out what is the cheapest treasury to deliver and you buy that one and you'll deliver it. So treasury futures are uh, physical settled. They're not just cash settled. Uh, for years, the basis trade was dead because interest rates were low. There wasn't a lot of volatility. There wasn't much to talk about. It was a big trade in the 80s. But in recent years, as the Fed started raising rates, first in 2018 and 2019, the need for people to hedge became apparent. And usually the cheapest to deliver treasury is an illiquid off the run. And whenever there's any buying pressure in it, it gets out of line with the rest of them or um, if they're selling pressure on it, it gets out of line in the other way. And it creates an opportunity to do the basis trade where you would borrow in the repo market and you would buy this security um, and you would put a short futures against it and then deliver it and you would make an arbitrage profit. So if we go to the first chart, um, a lot of people, now I'm going to change tact here and talk about this chart and bring the basis trade right back into it. A lot of people look at what's going on in the futures markets. The top panel is interest rates because we're more comfortable with that. And it's plotted inversely. So higher rates goes down. So like prices, it goes down. And the bottom panel shows you the net large speculator position. Net means all the longs and shorts in the 10-year futures. And you can see that that's at about a decade plus extreme short. So they're well below zero, meaning they're more shorts than longs. And they're very, very short. And a lot of people looked at this and said, aha, everybody's bearish, that means that the next thing in the market is going to be a rally. However, let's drill down a little bit further. So if you go to the next chart, they do provide a little bit more detail. So the top panel on this chart in black is the uh, is the 10 year yield plotted inversely again, down, down price, higher yield. And then you see the net large speculators. So the top two panels are the same ones I showed before, but they do provide another level of detail. Levered funds, which are the hedge funds, is in the third panel. They're very short right now. And asset managers, these are unlevered asset managers like commodity trading advisors, commodity pool operators, um, or mutual funds that can traffic in uh, futures. They're very long. So you've got the asset managers and the hedge funds at opposite ends. What's going on with the hedge funds? So if we go to the next chart, uh, this comes from a report put out last week by the Federal Reserve Board, and it uses OFR, which is Office of Financial Research, for a quick two seconds on this. After the financial crisis, the Treasury and the Fed and the FDIC and stuff put together the Financial Stability Oversight Council. It's headed by the, the Treasury Secretary and the Fed Chairman, and they all the departments that regulate financial markets and banking get together and talk about financial stability. So they created an, a, a department called the Office of Financial Research, which supports them by doing research. And they collect data. They have a lot of unpublished data. That means it is publicly available data, but they just don't publish it. So the New York Fed got a hold of some of this unpublished data. I've been trying to get a hold of it. No one's answering my emails over there. Maybe one day they will. And it shows what's going on in delivery versus payment. That's what DVP means in sponsored trades. Now, let me put this in English. Hedge funds are borrowing more and more. This chart shows you 
that in early 2022, they were borrowing in the repo market about $50 billion, and now they're borrowing about $200 billion. What does that mean? That means they have $250 billion of treasury positions that they borrowed money to finance those positions through the repo market. The lending market, which is the dotted line, hasn't been moving. So the only movement has been in borrowing. If we go to the next chart, this drills it down a little bit further. Again, this is unpublished data from uh, the OFR through the Federal Reserve report put out last week. If CTD in the bottom means cheapest to deliver. So if you look at the three cheapest to deliver contracts in the next contract that expires, three cheapest to deliver treasury securities, in the next futures contract that expires, so that would be the September contract and then the December contract, you then can look at how many of those positions are being financed through the repo market. That's going up too, just like overall repo. So what that says is a lot of the hedge funds are financing positions in the cheapest to deliver securities. We go to the last uh, chart of this section. This shows you the two, five, and 10 year short futures position. The blue line has been skyrocketing. The ultra bond has been moving because that one is really not a cheapest to deliver type of market. So let me sum it all up for you. What you're seeing with that levered trader position in the futures contract, which everybody's saying everybody's short, so they all hate the market, so it's going to rally, is an arbitrage. There's been a lot of people that need to hedge because there's an interest rate again. It has created a distortion between the futures price and the underlying cash cheapest to deliver prices. And hedge funds are jumping in there. They're buying the cheapest to deliver. They're financing it through repo. And the OFR data is showing that that's been happening. And there, there's been a big rise in the short futures position. The data shows that that's been happening. At expiration, when they have to make delivery on a short futures position, they just give those bonds and then they pocket the difference because they're both trading at different prices and they have to converge to the same price at delivery and then they make the difference in an arbitrage. So that levered futures position is not a directional bet on rates, which everybody thinks it is, which is why they're saying everybody's short. It's the basis trade is back. It came back in 2018, 2019 because interest rates went up. Remember the Fed raised rates to two and a half percent. It is back again because they've raised rates to over 5% this time as well. What are other measures of bond market sentiment and positions, positioning saying? So let's go to the next chart and let's look at the, um, the, the, the net position of asset managers. These are these unlevered asset managers I showed a few charts ago. That's at a decade plus high. They're very, very long this market. That is a directional bet on interest rates. They are bullish on the bond market. How do we know that's accurate? How do we, because other measures say similar things. So if we go to the next chart, this is lifted right from the Bank of America Global Fund Manager Survey for August. And it shows you the net position of expecting lower rates. And for the first time in the 20 year history of this series, it's above zero, meaning that the majority of fund managers expect lower interest rates. In other words, they're now bullish for the first time in 20 years. I might add that between 2010 and 2020, there was a monstrous bond rally and they missed the whole thing. They were constantly saying that rates are going to go up, rates are going to go up, rates are going to go up, and they missed the whole thing. Now that rates have gone up, now they're saying, nope, now they're going to go down. So the asset managers in the previous chart are very long. So are the global fund managers. We go to the next chart. This one, the black line is the 10 year yield and all those colored lines by year are the forecasts by economists. Bloomberg surveys about 70 economists a month. They ask, what is your interest rate forecast for the next six quarters? So give me the end of Q3, which is September 30th, the end of Q4, Q1, two and three and four of next year. And this plots the median. So what you see is most of those lines were upward sloping in the blue, which was 2020, in the orange, which was 2021, and that they they were thinking rates were going to go up, but vastly underestimated how much they're going to go up. But if you go to the red, which is 2023, those lines are downward sloping, meaning that the economists for the first time in the post-pandemic era 
are now thinking that the next move down is going to be interest rates. So economists are bullish. Global fund managers are bullish. Asset managers are bullish. How about traders? That's the next and last chart in this section. So this next last chart in this section uh, shows you the TLT, the ETF TLT, which is the iShares 20 plus treasury bond. So there's the price. It trades at about $94, $95. Uh, and the bottom line shows you the cumulative flows. The red line has been going up for a year. Traders are accumulating TLT positions in that ETF because they think that it's going to rally, meaning rates are going to go down. So the asset managers are long in the futures contract, but it's, and that's a directional bet. How do we know that? Because every other measure, global fund managers, economists, and traders are all saying the same thing. So when you take the basis trade out, that's what the levered hedge funds are doing. What you're left with is everybody's bullish on the bond market up and down the line. What are the bond bulls looking for? So yeah, so now the, the final question is, what is it they want? So if we go to the next chart, the next chart here, the Philadelphia Federal Reserve has done a quarterly survey of professional forecasters, and they've been doing this for over 50 years. In other words, they ask a series of a group of economists and money managers, a whole bunch of questions, very similar to the Bloomberg thing. What do you think is going to happen over the next four quarters and stuff? And so one of the questions they ask is, what do you think is the probability that over the next year we will have a recession? The median probability in Q3 that was put out a few weeks ago, that, that survey result, was 34.4% or one third chance. Now, if you look at the 50 year history of this survey, that's the highest it's ever been other than the previous two quarters. Um, we are in a much higher place than we've ever been in the previous 50 years. In other words, why is everybody bullish? because we're going to have a recession. That's why everybody's bullish. They think we're going to have a recession, and they think that that is going to force the Fed to cut rates next year, and that means that interest rates are going to fall. We go to the final chart. The final chart shows in black, shows the targeted funds rate, the Fed funds rate, and all those colored lines are the forward Fed fund futures contract. They've completely underestimated where the Fed is, but look at those red lines. Again, those are the forward futures the forward futures curve for 2023, it goes down. They're now thinking that into next year, the Fed's going to be cutting rates. Why? We vanquished inflation. It went from nine to a three handle. Now, I've talked about this in other calls here. I think inflation bottomed for the year in June at three, and it's going to drift higher, and it's going to be problematic. But that's where they are. So let's sum it up. The basis trade is back. It's just an arbitrage against cash and futures. People are looking at the net speculator position going, everybody hates the bond market. You got to buy bonds. That's the contrarian call. But if you remove that basis trade, you're left with asset managers, global fund managers, economists and traders are all bullish on bonds. They're all thinking a recession is coming. They're thinking inflation has been vanquished. That's priced in. That is priced in. A recession and inflation is vanquished. If that does not happen, the market's going to move. The contrarian play in this market is to be short bonds, to bet on higher interest rates, that inflation has not been as vanquished as everybody thinks, and that the hard landing recession may become no landing. We like to continue with the airplane metaphor. No landing means the economy just continues to move along and just doesn't come in for a landing. Soft landing, I know Wall Street loves the phrase soft landing, and I'll just riff on this for a second. My only complaint about a soft landing is I have no idea what that is because it's not definable. If you ask three economists what is a soft landing, you'll get four different definitions of it. I know what a hard landing is and what no landing is. A soft landing is kind of this nebulous middle ground. And like I used to joke, that's what Wall Street loves because it's in the middle. It doesn't have a definition. So predict a soft landing. I can't be wrong. Maybe I can't be right either, but I can't be wrong. Um, so I don't know what a soft landing is, but I think for those that are betting for like a hardish kind of landing or a recession or vanquished inflation, it's already priced in. The data is pretty clear across the board from, like I said, futures to traders to economists to fund managers. They're all betting on lower interest rates and they need everything to go right for that to work. If any of those things don't work, like no recession, Inflation stays a little bit sticky. 
or anything else along those lines, that long trade won't work as well. So the contrarian call is everybody really is bullish in the bond market. So be careful. Maybe if you want to be a contrarian, look at the short side or a bet on higher interest rates. Jim, thank you for your thoughts today. And thank you everyone for joining us. If you have any questions on Arbor Research, Bianca Research, or Arbor Data Science, you can contact us by emailing Gus Handler at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. Thanks again and have a great day.